OK, let's step back to polynomials and give you a couple of near examples, near inner product examples. For example, p dotted with q equals p of 0 times q of 0. Ha. Remember, these are polynomials. I can evaluate them if I want to, right? So instead of integrate, I can integrate them, great. That gives me a number, I love it. But I can also evaluate them. Who's to tell me that I cannot evaluate them? And this is a rule that takes two polynomials, produces a number. So it's a candidate for inner product. Is it an inner product? So I see one hand up, I want to see a couple more. No, you're saying, you're shaking your head, why not? Not positive, definite. Yes, uh, symmetric, clearly. Like when some, uh, or commutative rather. So commutativity is the sort of thing that I don't even want to explain. Because when you start explaining it, it invariably seems more complicated than it is. So if you're really, really confused about commutativity, we'll sit down and really take, take our time in going through what it means. And it's more how you talk about it than what you actually do. So, I would describe this as, of course it is symmetric. Of course it is commutative without explaining it. Just the word of course, I think, explains it. Otherwise, it becomes more complicated than it really is. Is it distributive? Of course it is distributive. But don't just do it by staring at the equation and picking out the features of it. Go through in your head without writing things down the mechanics of what it would mean. You have to explain it to yourself. You have to say, if I take Q to be a sum of two functions. And I evaluate it in two different ways. First, dotted with the sum, and otherwise dotted individually, and then add together the results. Would I get the same thing? And once you convince yourself that yes, of course you would, then you got it. But positive definiteness, Ben says no. And so he has to give me a counter examples of two polynomials that I can multiply that where the result will not be positive. X, not two polynomials, one polynomial dotted with itself that would not be positive. So what happens when I dot X with X? What do I get? Zero, because X evaluated at zero, zero, yeah, yeah, zero. Okay, so not positive definite. So I'll fix it. X squared minus X, where the hell did that come from? X squared minus X. Yeah. Yeah, he looked for something, he was inspired by this, and looked for something that would have zero here and zero here. So he said x times x minus one. That's what it really was. According to this attempt at an inner product is zero. Okay, I'll fix it. Did I fix it? No, because I can throw in times x minus two. Oh, I didn't say equals zero. Times x minus two, correct. So, now I'll make one interesting point. Suppose that we'll limit ourselves to, to the space of quadratic polynomials. Isn't that interesting that on the space of quadratic polynomials, this isn't in a product? Because you can't do this, this cubic, you can't have a quadratic polynomial go through three zeros. So that's another subtlety, that one and the same definition can be a perfectly legitimate inner product on a particular space and fail positive definiteness on a wider space. So that's not too surprising, but just make a mental note of it, that it's quite possible for something like that to happen. Okay, so, uh, but if we're talking about polynomials in general, there's no way I can fix it, because you will always be able to find, well, by a clear recipe. Except you kind of see that if I start throwing in points in the middle, like 0.5 and 0.75, and start filling in the line, then it's kind of getting closer and closer to the integral, right? Because that's what an integral would be, in this case, between 0 and 2. So, I mean, this is idle talk. But if I threw in infinitely many of these, which of course there's no such thing because infinity is a funny concept. You know, so I'm not saying that. But I just want you to see the similarity between this 
and the integral definition that isn't in a product. Because an integral is sort of like, in some ways, in very specific, narrow ways, an infinite number of sums like these. And that brings positive definiteness back, at least among reasonably continuous functions. <laughs>